Hey, I'm Stephen from Fan Club, and you're on IndieBuddy.com. Everything. I'm nervously excited <laughs> and extremely relieved to get it out. Yeah, it's uh, it was a kind of like um, a very intense kind of uh, uh, I don't know operation to get the album done, and uh, it was a pleasure to record and a pleasure to do. But when you're sitting on the record, then and you're kind of that's when when there's a distance between you finishing the record and putting the record out. That's where all the nerves start to creep in. You just want to put it out straight away, you know. Oh yeah, you start like you go through different like uh, different phases of like um, just being like, this is the worst thing I've ever done, and then this is the best thing we've ever done, you know. But uh, everybody has that, you know. Yeah, vulture culture is kind of just about, I guess. Um, some people were thinking it was about like the entertainment industry and that the vultures. Kind of like you know vultures fly around waiting for your body to drop and then come down and take the bits but really it was about like um it's more open than that and you can apply that title to different people you might know or might know um you know like there's there's a bank just down the street uh that i think it was the main bank to do with the housing crisis and somebody painted a giant vulture outside of it and uh everything started to click when we had that title and we start seeing that like um you know with hollywood all, with all those producers and all that stuff that happened and like they're the vultures and then uh, the town that we grow up uh, grew up in rush there's a lot of um there's a lot of vultures that live there too you know so it's like you meet these people and then <clears throat> we decided that it was a really interesting theme to kind of follow throughout the album because a lot of the songs touch on like inner violence and stuff and and that kind of idea of of um of, of full vultures flying above your head like even if it's just metaphor metaphors and stuff and and like uh even like if you're the vulture you know it's it's that kind of thing but the song vulture culture is <clears throat> actually written from the point of view of a bad person you know and it's it's the, it's almost confessional but it's kind of boasty the song's very got a groove to it and uh yeah, that's it. It was more, we'd come off, we'd come off like a lot of touring and we went into pre-production for the album maybe too quick and we put, we ended up really pushing ourselves and we wanted to deliver something that was intense and, and as honest as possible for the band. And uh, I mean, it toyed with us on a, on a, on a point that, you know, you're in a you're in a position where you're like we were very tight live and we were very tight in the rehearsal room but when things are going too easy you start to kind of have all these self doubts and you seem sort of like this has to be hard you know it has to be complicated for it to be good you know but um as soon as we got past that and broke it all down and realized it's just about the music it's just about the songs it's about the melodies and once we kill them then it's it's all good, yeah. But as far as like the pressure of recording it, there wasn't very much pressure. All of the the stuff that was kind of toying with us and stuff was more external life stuff that was coming in, you know, and uh, personal life stuff. And uh, going to record the album was actually such a dream, you know. That's really interesting because we've noticed that on the last few tours that we'd have a lot of fans, like teenage fans, and even like people in their 20s and stuff and you know when you're in that kind of age bracket there's a huge kind of search for identity and and there's a lot of um there's a lot of chaos happening around you and there's a lot of confusion and if you can find a, a band or a movie or or anything a book or whatever that helps you translate that in your head it, it, it always seems to click you know with you and stuff and that's all I've ever wanted our band to be is something hopefully that can help translate that kind of stuff to a teenager like the way it did for me when the first time I heard The Offspring or Nirvana or something and it, it just like rewired my brain and like that's all we've ever wanted for uh, for our band to be like you know and um, yeah sometimes like you're playing gigs and we're, we'll be singing a song we'll be doing a song and we'll look in the crowd and there's like a bunch of people with their eyes closed screaming the song and you just know they're going through something now 
and it's clicked with them and uh, it might they might, might not be singing or screaming it about the thing that you wrote it about but that doesn't matter because they're getting some kind of fulfillment from it and uh, yeah that's that's pretty amazing that was more like um, hesitations that was very much like one of the early songs for this album it was like that's the inner voice song you know and um, you have like a lot of the lyrics um, like the verses are basically your inner voice talking to you and telling you like oh congratulations you know like just kind of being a bit bit like that to you and stuff and the chorus is then your outer self screaming like about your hesitations and stuff um, that was one of the first songs and was written really quickly I had a riff showed Dara he very quickly put together drums uh, the beat we structured the whole song and I think within two days we had the full song and it might have been maybe where we were as a band at that time and the perfect song for us to start the album like writing process um, because at the time we were having a lot of that and I was definitely having a lot of that like inner voice type things of self-doubt and self-loathing and <laughs> all these kind of things and um, yeah and it was kind of like uh, it kick-started the writing of the album because it's just such a big belter and you're just screaming your head off the whole time so <laughs> yeah it was cool um it's not really hard it's like it was hard at the start about like a year and a half ago uh, i wouldn't have been saying anything like this i wouldn't have been talking about like personal stuff or private stuff or anything because i thought that and my idea of being in a band or being in the public eye was like do not come off as damaged goods or you know hold it in like you know only only kind of portray uh, a certain image and stuff but <clears throat> that's really not healthy and it's not healthy to promote that either because i see a lot of acts and bands promoting this kind of go go party attitude and there's a lot of easily influenced people out there who might try to follow that path and it doesn't lead to anywhere except for like self-destruction so i wanted to kind of promote something that was a little bit more honest a bit more real something that again can speak the same language that maybe those teenagers or people in their 20s and stuff um what they're going through and stuff but uh it's it's really helpful for me to talk about all this stuff now so it's great yeah <laughs> that was very very hot it was like being in an oven yeah they had like these huge lights above us it was all finn keenan's idea um yeah we were just trapped in this glass box for the entire day like 12 hours and we couldn't leave because i mean he was he was shooting like constantly you know he's like if he's shooting stuff in the distance we have to be in the background in the glass box and uh, it was just so so roasting and hot it was really fun though and to have all these kind of like gold zombies like these actors like who did a, an amazing job like run at the box and like they were really trying to get into that you know and it was like uh it was a bit intimidating sometimes it was like um we thought the glass would smash at some points like there was like it, the walls were like caving in and stuff it was really fun shoot that's probably one of my favorite video shoots now yeah um with nightmare i had an idea about like writing this kind of like dark a kind of dark twisted like show band song so i wanted to be like sound or be structured kind of like a 60s show band thing and uh, like loads of harmonies and stuff but to be singing about like you know kind of like darker things like you know i just thought that was like a really funny twist on it and i imagine like the beatles dressed as goths singing it and yeah um i thought that would be pretty cool and that, again, that song was one of the early songs to uh, to be written for the album. And again, it was like really quick. I had a riff, Dara jumped on, and within a day we had the full song. So it was it was a pretty simple process. And that's it, the same goes for a lot of the songs. It was like we just kind of tried to get rid of any type of gimmick and any type of trick and just kind of be the band that we are alive and just smash out these big kind of pop rock songs yeah it's really strange and it's so funny as well because 
uh, it's obvious that like a lot of our fans, we all have the same sense of humor or something, or like they really get the in jokes and and uh, the whole like false worshiping thing is just so funny. Like you know, we started kind of doing that to them, so we would bow to them and and, and worship them. And then they would do it back, and it's it's really awesome. They used to have a thing where they would just kind of uh, give us the fingers, like you know, they used to just do that like the whole time, throughout the whole show. That was really funny. Um, but yeah, our fans are like just some of the most like nicest people I've ever met. It's just it, it's such a pleasure doing shows for them, and um, it's really humbling as well to kind of travel across like the UK, Europe, America, and Ireland, and. And kind of realize like how similar everybody is and and there's no real difference between them and it's like um they're they're there for the music the enjoyment the escapism whatever they want to get from it it's pretty cool and uh yeah we all kind of click together and become one entity like that always says you know that was crazy yeah we were rehearsing for slain rehearsing for metallic show that was the big one coming up and we were in the rehearsal studio and then I got a phone call went outside and got we got asked to support Smashing Pumpkins so it was like we had to and it was like they were like you're supporting Smashing Pumpkins it's in four days so we had to basically book all the flights we could and get over there and we did two shows and then flew back played Slane and then flew back again and finished the Smashing Pumpkins tour. It was like the craziest week we've ever had, like you know, as a band. And uh, getting to watch Smashing Pumpkins every night, like we watched every show, the entire show, was it was incredible. And they were the coolest people ever. Like they were proper just musicians, just artists, really humble guys. And uh, yeah, it was just yeah, it was a bit of a dream, like you know. We were just trying to stay out of the way and hopefully, hopefully deliver a good uh, support. And uh, they were so cool. They had treated us amazingly. Yeah. I, yeah, I didn't let it hit me. And same with Slain. It was like, I just want to go and do the job. And I, I like really enjoyed it in the moment and like had a great time. But um, it was only the week after we got back from all of that, that uh, I woke up one morning in shock, kind of, you know, just like, what, what just happened? You know? This time yesterday, I was, you know, supporting Smashing Pumpkins. Like, I never thought that would happen. That's insane. And then Slain as well. Like, I mean, I've been to Slain before, and you fantasize about being on that stage. You never think you're going to actually be on that stage. And to look out into that crowd and really kind of get an idea of how big that crowd is, it was mind-blowing. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, yeah, so it was uh, one of our mates, Ross, um, from Rush. Um, we knew it was his birthday on the same day, and he's a massive Metallica fan. So uh, Kev made sure to give him a nice shout out. Yeah, I mean, like, you kind of learn so much from just jumping in the deep end and uh, everything that went right and everything that went wrong. Like, you just learn so, so much, so. I think we've all just become like really tight as a band and um, not just in the performance and the songwriting and stuff but more like the unit and the team and uh, like Dara has kind of taken on tour managing roles so he's drummer slash tour manager which always freaks out all of the promoters when we turn up and they're like the drummer is the tour manager and they're like he's supposed to be the wild one like you know this is weird like you know Dara is doing an amazing job as tour manager. Kev does a lot of the business stuff as well, and we all kind of have a role within within that. And that's only some that's something that we could only learn from really kind of jumping in the deep end. And because we got into it quite naively, thinking that like you kind of just get in there and just be a band, and it, it all just happens and stuff, you know. But it's like we love the music industry so we're, we're we're like obsessed music bands and it's the only reason we do it and yeah it's it's really fun really wild very different life so it's cool um i think i always said and it's the same thing that i would still say is just focus on the music if you're starting off just focus on the music 
don't worry about anything else. If you don't have a song or, you know, the right melody or you don't really work out your music or your writing, uh, you don't have anything then. It's got to be about the music. Nothing else matters without it, you know. Um, sometimes you can see some hype artists and they might get into it and it's not about the music, but they're gone in six months time or, or the band breaks up in a year or something like that. And you kind of, you have to be about the music to do it, you know, or else it's meaningless. <laughs> um, we're going to do a few festivals during the summer. We're doing Stan and Calling, Why Not Festival, Independence in Cork. And then we're going to uh, go on tour in October, headline tour across the UK. And then November into Europe. And then we're going to finish off in Dublin on December 13th, Friday the 13th. And we made it a specific reason to, to pick that day, to freak everybody out, you know. What could go wrong? I <laughs> <laughs> uh, just want to say a massive thanks to anybody for constantly supporting us and pushing us. So you guys real? <laughs>